Well, the time has come to finally do a tube swap on the monitor in the Paperboy at the arcade. So this is a medium res 19 inch K7000. And if you look here, all of the color pots are dead center. Red cut off and drive, green cut off and drive, and blue cut off and drive are all dead center. And the monitor looks like this. It has uh, no red and it has no blue. Uh, the red gun and the blue gun are almost completely dead. The only gun that's actually working is the green. And no, it's not a problem with the chassis or anything. It's an actual picture tube issue because I have rejuvenated this thing twice. And twice it's somewhat come back. And after about a couple of months, it just goes back to this. So this tube is absolutely a goner. And that's unfortunate. Uh, but what is fortunate is that I have a replacement. I have this 19-inch Orion tube that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for 10 whole dollars. So we're going to use this as a tube swap. So we are going to remove this yoke, remove this yoke, put this yoke on this tube and put this chassis on this tube and hopefully get this up and going again so we can get a nice fresh new good looking monitor in the Paperboy. So, uh, like I say, this thing uh, has been running in the machine for nearly six years with a replacement arcade parts and repair flyback. So, there's a note when you try and order these flybacks that says that it will not work for a medium res uh, 7000. But I've been running this replacement flyback on this medium res uh, 7000 with the box there, the extra capacitor box, for nearly six years without issue. So, you can run those on these. And it does have the screen burn in here from the Paperboy high score stuff. So, I've been running Paperboy at the arcade for like the last six months or so with the screen all green like this. So <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to get around to getting it swapped out. So after I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace for 10 whole dollars, I thought, okay, now's the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over what needs to happen in order to prep this tube to use this yoke. And we will get this swapped over. So whenever possible, you always want to reuse the original rings from the donor tube that you're using. So we'll pop, we'll mark those rings where they're at, pop those rings off, take this yoke off, put it on here, put the rings back on, and try and get this all converged and everything and see how well we can make it look. So, I mean, we're obviously running Cruising USA, and here's what it looks like before. So <laughs> you can't even see the midway. It's gone. And if I hooked up a rejuvenator to this and showed you, the green gun is like somewhat in the middle. Uh, the red gun and the blue gun are down here in the bad, as obviously you can see. So it's not an issue of having the uh, red and blue missing. Uh, the red and blue are actually here. And you can, just as a uh, show and tell here, if I was to turn down the green, uh, come on, there we go, turn the cutoff down, you can see the blue, see, we got blue, so it's not missing blue, and we've got some red there, if I turn the red up, that's with the drive all the way up, and yeah, the red's just gone, there's no red, it's gone, so, yeah, the, uh, it's just, it's bad. So we'll set these back to the middle and then we will have a nice um, nominal position for all these to be in when we get the tube swapped over. So there we go. Uh, so let's get the camera on the overhead and we'll go through getting everything off this one, getting everything off this one and swapping it over to this one and seeing how well this project will turn out. Okay, so here is our donor tube. It's an Orion, and the model number is Alpha 48 Alpha Golf Yankee 13 X Ray 77. And we'll show that here shortly. I probably should have shown it before we started this, but anyway. Okay, so if we clean off the tube here, we want to make sure that this is all secure because we're going to have to mark this. All right. So. Whenever possible, you always want to reuse the original set of convergence rings from the, to the tube that you're using as a donor. So we're going to be taking this yoke off, but we're going to be reusing these rings. So you want to mark these very well in multiple spots here. So we'll go right there, because we're going to want to put this exactly back where we got it, um, or where it used to be. That will 
really help you out when you're doing your convergence. Because if we put this back in the exact correct spot that it used to be in, then we, and if we have convergence problems, we know that we can ha all we have to do is adjust the yoke better, and we shouldn't have to mess with these at all. So I'm going to mark this in three locations. One, two, and then over here for a third one. And we'll let's mark these that there and that there and this one here. Because if you just mark the retainer ring, you can this ring will move around on you. So okay, that's lined up, that's lined up, and that's lined up. So we should be able to put this exactly back where it was. That's one of the best tips that I can give you on this. So now we can unscrew this and sometimes these are hard to get off so you want to kind of hold the entire assembly with both fingers and just try and it is stuck on there because it's unbelievably easy to snap these arms off and break this whole assembly it's unbelievably easy for that to happen so you want to be somewhat careful in trying to remove this sometimes you can get a uh, flat head here and try and break the tension on the legs from the tape because after all the years of being stuck on this tape it can get well stuck so you kind of want to loosen up the grip and I think we just got it at least the top half we did let's try to work on these bottom ones Bada boom, there you go. If you take your time and, and go easy on it, we can remove it fairly easy. So here you can see all my marks. We should be able to slide this back on and line them up with our marks here on our tape and be good. All right, so we'll set this aside. Now we can loosen up our yoke. And same thing, we'll just turn it here and it should slide right off just like so. Now we want to make sure we don't damage this tape because it has our marks on it. Perfection. And uh, this looks like it's in good good condition. Alright, so we'll save this. This may be compatible with a standard Res 7000, so we'll save that for future testing. And all right, so now let's perform the surgery on our other monitor. Set this aside for now. Get this one up here. And we don't need to worry about this. Actually, wait a minute. You know, I just realized we're not going to be able to use these at all because this yoke has the rings built into the yoke. This is all one assembly. It's not a separate assembly like this. I just, you guys might have been screaming at the, at the screen when I was talking about this because I didn't notice it till just now. This, the convergence rings are built into the yoke assembly. So uh, it's all one piece. It's not something that I can... It's not a separate thing, so we may have our work cut out for us. Oh, that sucks, because it would have been so much easier to just swap the yoke, put these back in place, and be, uh, it would have been a five minute swap with some convergence trips, very likely, but, oh well, oh no, and it's all broken. Oh, ah, oh, this sucks. It's all, it's broken. Yeah, it's falling apart on me. Well, this sucks. How am I going to do this now? This just got a lot more difficult. These are all busted. All of them. The whole thing is loose. I don't know how we're going to do this now. There, it's just falling apart. Oh, dang it. Are 
Are there any? There are some that are intact. No, it's broken off the assembly. It's not. Oh, dang it. Yeah, this is just, this is bad. Um, yeah. Uh, well, we'll have to figure something out. I gotta get rid of all these pieces that are stuck to the tape, or we're not even getting it off. There we go. Okay. Well, yeah, this is... Uh, look at all these parts. This is... I might be able to use this piece that's still there and these pieces to... I'm gonna have to probably cut this off of here and this glue. Now, oh, this piece is broken anyway. This keeps the rings secure so they don't move and it's gone. So I'm gonna have to use some uh, hot glue to hold the rings in place once we redo the convergence because normally this ring uh, will turn and tighten and put pressure against the rings to keep them from moving, but it's broken. So, but it does appear I should have some stubs here that I can put this ring on and at least secure it down. So we might be in good shape, even though it's all broken. That's a bummer. Well, let's get rid of all this stuff. And we are done with this tube. So let's get rid of it. And put this here. And see if we can work a miracle here. Let's get rid of this convergence strip and start fresh. First, let's examine this. Yeah, it seems okay. Nothing, uh, no corrosion or anything. So we'll put this on here. And this has a different. I think this is fatter because it doesn't go all the way up. Yeah, this doesn't go all the way up. We can probably still work with this, but this doesn't go. That's as far forward as that goes on there. This may not work, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find a tube that has a, the skinnier hub here and if this is all the way up against this I'm not going to be able to use any convergence strips either because they won't fit through there. Um, I guess what we can try here is we can go ahead and just put this yeah, like that. Let's try it like that. Where did the screw go? Where did the screw go? Where did the screw go? Did I throw it away? Oh no, here it is. It's still in. Oh. Dropping tools. Still in the driver. We may be able to get away with securing this like this. We'll make sure it's straight. You know, if anything, you know what? If anything, I could just break this off and reuse the originals, but if I did that, I'd have no way to secure the yoke, so... Uh. Okay. No, that's... I mean, it's secure, but... It'll have to... I think that'll be okay. All right. Lucked out on that. Okay, well, the only real thing to do here is to... Uh, Now that is some serious heat. The socket appears to be fine. That's just heat likely from a burned up uh, capacitor. The C36 right in front of it might have burned up. But 
All right, well, um, now what we need to do is flip this around. Actually, you know what, let's hook up the chassis. Let's grab the chassis. And this has been previously rebuilt, like I said. Let's plug the yoke in, the degauss connector. We'll just set this right here. Uh, we will hook up the anode last, so we'll plug in the neck. We will connect the ground. We'll just twist the wire a bit there for now. Now we'll hook up our anode, like so. Okay, so we have our anode, neck, yoke, ground, with no remote. We just need power and video. So let's back this up here real quick a little bit. Spin, it, spin this around. Okay. And let's get you off the overhead and we'll witness together what happens with this and see what it looks like. Okay, we are ready to go. We have Cruising USA hooked back up. Lights off behind me so we can see the screen, and here we go. Uh, one, two, three. Nope. I got overzealous, and I forgot to hook up video and power. See, we make mistakes. I don't edit them out. There's no reason to do that. And all we got to do is hook up power and video. All right, take two. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, fires right up. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's not gonna work, guys. It's not gonna work. See this? I am not gonna be able to use this tube. See how the, we got, yeah. Uh, crapola. It's got the, the yoke is not, we got this circle here. Oh, darn it. Um, Let's turn contrast all the way down, brightness all the way down, and our flyback is too high, so let's turn the flyback down until our raster lines, well, let's, actually, let's adjust focus here real quick. That's a good focus. Let's turn the rest down until we get the lines go away, all right? Brightness back up, contrast back up. Well, it works, but we've got <laughs> just a big circle here. Uh, not so much on this side, but this is no good. Now, mm, let's just get the camera on the tripod to see if we can work some type of miracle here. Okay, so I think we're not gonna be able to get this to work because it looks like we're still missing red somehow. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Um, but regardless, it, I, the yoke, I think, has to come much more forward on the tube, and because this tube has a different thickness of neck there at the hilt, uh, it, it's, I don't think we're going to be able to get this to work. There's just no way to... Uh, yeah, it's just there's just not going to be any way to do this. If I try to adjust the purity... Uh, Now, see, this is, the yoke is in the wrong position. That's why it's all discolored like this. Um, I need to loosen this back up. I mean, it's possible it's too far back. Well, it's too far forward. It, it needs to be... Yeah, it's, that's, that's too far back. That's not going to work. It, I, it has to come more forward towards the tube, and it can't. The, the hilt of the tube is too thick, so we are not going to be able to use this tube. That's a bummer. Uh, and for somehow, it still looks like I'm missing red. So i got to figure out why I'm missing red, because I thought it was due to that tube. Well, I will say, I will say it is the tube. The tube, if you look at the, the emission on the, uh, the rejuvenator, the emission is way down there in the bad. So the, the tube is definitely has no red. It's shot. But now, for some reason, I have no red on the chassis itself. So, 
that's also odd. Like and that's that's what that's the red drive pot turned all the way up, and that's the red cutoff pot. So it's doing something, but yeah, um, that is a bummer for sure. Like yeah, we don't have any red. The chassis has no red. Well, um, we got blue though. We're not going to be able to use this tube. The yoke does not fit up against it um, far enough. And that's why we have this curvature. And you can see if I move the, the yoke further away, the curvature <laughs> gets worse. So uh, we are not going to be able to use this tube. So that's a bummer. I'm going to turn this off and we'll have to come up with some other game plan here. Well, you're not going to believe it, but I went through my stash and I ended up finding this Korean uh, A1 AM-0316 monitor under my stairs. It's been under my stairs for quite a while uh, And it worked perfectly when I put it away and it just so happens that it has the exact same yoke uh, Well the same style it's for a standard res and it's not going to read the same but uh, different inductance and whatnot. But you can see here. It's the exact same thing so we are going to sacrifice this tube for our K7000 so uh, I can put, I can use this, I can, you know, use this monitor, it's a standard res monitor, I can use this monitor, or this chassis, on any standard res CR23 tube. So we're not sacrificing the chassis or the frame, I can take that tube that we just tried to use and put it in this frame and re repurpose it for this monitor so we can replace what we're stealing from this one with that television tube and get this back up and running and use this tube for our K7000 swap. So we're going to end up uh, not sacrificing really anything. So it'll all work out in the end. So that being said, I am going to steal this yoke off of here. And we are going to take all this off. Uh, and just for the sake of testing, I'm going to leave this tube in the frame and all that. So I'll just take the chassis off, take the yoke off, take uh, all this assembly off, and reinstall this assembly. And then I'll come back, because we already saw how to do all that. And then uh, because the rings are built into this, we don't need to worry about marking it just like this one. So when I come back, I'll have all of the K7000 stuff installed on here with the chassis hooked up, and we'll be ready to test it and see how it works with this tube and this setup. So here we go. All right, so just to show you that these are, in fact, different, even though they're uh, visually the same, they are different, in fact, different numbers here. So this is the standard res one. We got uh, 971513, and the medium res one is a 88, I'm going to shout on that. Uh, 882113, but the actual part number here is uh, 9 alpha 2917-001. So they are in fact different part numbers as you'd expect. And this, the horizontal lining on this one reads like 3.0 and this one is 0 0.9. So uh, we have to swap the yolks. Not, because, not just because it's medium res and there's different inductance on the yolk. There are different part numbers and this is for standard res. So even though they're visually the same, they are different part numbers and we're not going to be able to use the standard res yolk. So we'll set that aside and I'll get this on here and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so I got the 7000 and the 7000 yoke and all the setup and everything here on this AM0316 tube. Uh, it's just sitting here on the frame with a little... Uh, this is actually a Hanorex uh, MTC900E uh, manual that it's sitting on for insulation. And I'm skipping ahead here a bit because even after swapping all this stuff, it appears that we still have no red and an all green screen. So I thought, okay, let me just eliminate the possibility of it being an actual PCB uh, by hooking up the TPG. So if we just disconnect my quick disconnect here and plug it into my TPG and run medium res, we turn it on and we scroll through here. Look at that. Gorgeous RGB. So somehow, some way, uh, keep coming up with funky ass shit like every single day. The uh, my cruising USA board appears to be wonky. Um, or it could be an issue with the wiring, I don't know, but somehow there's something going on here. So with the TPG, you got beautiful RGB. And I can hear what you're saying. Are you sure you didn't have this problem originally with the original tube uh, because this board was faulty? Well, no, because it looked 
uh, terrible, absolutely terrible. The, how you saw it before on the old tube with this board, and it was just all green with no red or no blue, that's how it looked inside the paper boy. So I wouldn't have taken this out and done all this if it looked like this with the paper boy in there. So, or with this in the paper boy. So it, it, the other tube is absolutely bad. On the TPG, the red and the the blue were all the way down in the bad, and the green was up towards about 13 in the good uh, good area on the TPG. Or, I'm sorry, on the uh, on the uh, B and K rejuvenator. So the red and the green gun in that other tube are absolutely bad. That is for sure. But. Now that we have this good tube on here, uh, everything is good to go. So all I did was slide this on here, adjust it where it was level left and right. And with this all uh, uh, all in one type of yoke setup with the rings, uh, it's not that bad. It does have, uh, we have problems up here and then down here, it's not so bad. Uh, we need to turn our contrast down to roughly here. And let's see if we can kind of work some magic on this convergence. And somewhat zoom in here and see if we can... All I'm gonna do, uh, I'll show you here. I have a video on this already, but I'm just gonna adjust the rings here. Uh, we have uh, red and, this is basically, these two back rings are for, I believe, uh, the convergence for the horizontal lines. And the middle two are the two for the vertical lines. And then the forward two are the linearity. But we have absolutely no linearity. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not in linearity. It's been a long day. Um, uh, the word has left my brain. I am getting too old. Um, what? Help me out here. Help me out. Scream through the, the TV or whatever you're watching this through the phone. Uh, computer screen, um, the, the word has escaped me, I'm getting too old, we'll come back to it later. But uh, as far as for this, it's not the, the first two. Please, how come I'm forgetting this? Why am I forgetting this? Um, I can't think of it, I can't think of it, it left my mind. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna adjust the two furthest aft set of rings. I split them in half, uh, roughly. Okay, so that's about where they're going to have to stay. The middle two rings. Ah, <laughs> looking good. Um, right about there. Um, boys and girls, I have to say that that appears to really <laughs> be all that that needed. Uh, let's zoom out a bit, and that is not bad. Amazing. All I did was put the yoke on, adjust it to where it was somewhat straight. You can see here that we are not, uh, well, yeah, we are tilted a bit. I need to twist the yoke to bring this side down, and roughly like, roughly like so. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's tighten this a little bit. Nice. Scroll through here. Amazing. Okay, well, it looks like <laughs> the, the yoke swap and the setup is a complete success. I need to move the H position over slightly, roughly there. Good horizontal size, good vertical size. Uh, I say that's a complete success. The problem now is uh, we should be able to swap this tube into the K7000 frame. Let's get that done. And uh, I don't have another medium res PCB. What is wrong? Why did my Cruising USA board, why does it have no red all of a sudden? I want to see if I can troubleshoot how I lost red on this Cruising USA, maybe come cut back. I don't have another medium res PCB that I can use for testing. Well, let me see what I can figure out. Let's get this swapped in the other frame and go from there. All right, so I'm just troubleshooting this uh, missing red here on the Cruising USA board. And I don't know how or why, but somehow the red has shorted the ground. 
So the red is the 12th pin uh, from the right on the parts side here. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is the key, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 3 ohms to ground. If we do uh, ohms, we go back to 12, it's 3, point f 3 ohms to ground. Now a contrast to that, if I go to blue, there's blue right next to it, uh, 3 mega ohm. So where does this go? That goes directly to this pin right here, 3 ohms. Actually, that's ground, I'm sorry. Where, which one of these is it? There it is. So this is our red right here. This pin is red. And then if, uh, let's see, that's 0 ohms. No, nope, that's ground, I'm sorry. That's, I have to clip this on the red, okay. Hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's clip this onto there. And that goes to, yeah, right there. 3 ohms would be the ground. 0 ohms would be the, the pin. So this component is shorted. Now if I was to just clip this leg here, like that, and go back to ground, see, open. If I go right to the leg, zero. If I go to the pin, uh, so if you look here, this is cut. No cut, but if I touch right here, uh, hang on, there's zero. Um, one of these pins, uh, yeah, that should be Let's go here, like this, stay there, yeah. So, um, but if we go back to ground here and we touch 12, nothing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, nothing. But if we reattach this, and go to 12, we get our 3 ohms again. So this chip is bad. Let me change that out real quick. All right, so with the assistance of the hot air gun, or hot air station, I have removed the suspected faulty chip that we cut that leg off of, and the leg itself is right there. So there's our faulty chip, and here is a replacement chip. The chip is a uh, DM7407N, so Delta Mike 7407 November, and all these Benway boards are all the same, so I stole one off of a parts uh, Wolf unit board, and it resides right there in the U, is that U75 location? I think, no, U98, that is U98, the color uh, 7404 chip, so, so that's the old one, I stole one from the Wolf unit, put it in there in the socket, it's uh, all nice and clean, so pretty sure that that'll fix the problem. Uh, if we go back to ground now, and we go, originally we had three ohms to ground on red, so if we go, here is our ground, I think. One of these was ground. Am I not on ground? Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Um, there we go. There's the ground, okay. Now if we go back to that pin that was reading 3 ohms to ground, nothing. So if we go over here to red, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, nothing. So I think that'll solve our, pro our problem. I think we had that bad chip. No, no clue how it got taken out, but uh, it got taken out. So let's try it again now with that repaired and see if we get our red back. Okay, we have successfully swapped the tube from our donor. Uh, set up frame. The frame is right there. So we're hooked up and we're ready to go. The 7000 is back in. The original 7000 frame. Our donor tube is installed in the frame. Uh, and our Cruising USA board's back hooked up. So let's see if changing that uh, 7404 chip out brought our red back. Uh, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, this is the first power up after swapping it. And. Hmm, it's overly green, but we got red. Hang on, let's just see here. It's overly green. 
But yes, <laughs> red is back. We're way too green. What if we turn up blue? Uh, oh no, blue it bleeds, so we'll have to turn our green down instead. And to do, let's get the camera on the tripod. Hang on. Okay, yes, we are back in business. Um, let's turn. I'm going to have to readjust all of this again with Paperboy, but we have a full square image, about a, I'd say, quarter inch of black on this side and about eighth of an inch on that side. I could shift over an eighth of an inch, but that's fine. Uh, let's turn up, let's turn our green down. Uh, red up a bit, that's too much. Green down, roughly there. Blue, that's too much. There we go. I wonder why it's so overly green. Hmm. That looks pretty good. What do you think? Um, contrast down slightly, brightness up, roughly there. Uh, it's still too green. Dang, this is... Let's try that. Well, not bad for a tube swap, I must say. Um, it's just still a bit too green. That looks pretty good. It just seems like it's too dark. There, that's better. What do you think about that? What you think about that? Ah, now that is much better. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we what I want to do now is I'm going to get the old picture tube, hook up the the uh, rejuvenator to it, so you can see that that red and blue gun were dead. Uh, so this is now officially fixed, done, ready to go right back into Paperboy. It just still looks too green. That's a bit better. So yeah, uh, this is absolutely ready to drop right back into Paperboy. Still tweaking some things here, hang on. That's better, okay. Focus, uh, let's try focus here. That looks crisp, C-R-I-S-P, crisp. I'll play around, it's gonna have to be all readjusted for Paperboy, but um, yeah, I am happy with this. Excellent result, glad we figured this out. So this was a relatively easy, uh, tube swap because I was because the rings were incorporated with the yoke uh, I was able to slide it on there and have it be somewhat close uh, just right out of the gate so what we'll do is we'll call this done um, I need to get some hot glue on the ring set so I'll let this uh, hot glue gun heat up and I'll get some hot glue on that ring set but while we're waiting for it to heat up let's go ahead and turn this off and disconnect the video disconnect power and we will set this aside as a successful tube swap now I want to grab that old tube We'll test it, then I'm gonna grab that television tube and put it back in this frame right here and see if we can put the, uh, 
let's see if we can put this thing back together and replace what we stole. So let's grab that other tube that's bad, the original Paperboy tube, and check it out. All right, so we got the original Paperboy tube here. The uh, CR23 adapter is hooked up. We're plugged in, and I do want to mention that that uh, that word I couldn't remember earlier about the adjustment for those first sets of rings closest to the tube was purity. That was a purity adjustment. <laughs> I couldn't remember that to save my life. I don't know why it just went out of my brain, but it went out of my brain. So uh, purity adjustment on those first two rings, and we didn't need to adjust the purity at all uh, on that replacement tube because uh, it was perfect right out of the gate. So one of the benefits of having the rings attached to the yoke is you really don't have to do much convergence after swapping that type of yoke. So that worked out great. One of the quickest and easiest, I mean, if we didn't ha have that hurdle of trying to find a tube with this style or this, uh, uh, I don't know, angle of uh, hilt, it would have been a much quicker and easier setup. But we got it all done. Good to go. So here's the original tube. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. Uh, set heater. We want 6.3. For the heater voltage, we want 6.3. So we need to set our heater knob here to 6.3, roughly, uh, let's turn it down a bit, there we go, 6.3, and as we can see, our heater is heating up, so we'll turn it off. Now, we'll go to, uh, you can see here, heater leakage, we have a significant amount of heater leakage, that should be zero. So we have heater leakage, uh, we have no G1 leakage, uh, we do actually have a little bit of heat G1 leakage, so heater leakage, G1 leakage, that's already bad. Uh, set G1 voltage, we want 50 volts, which is right here, G1, 50. Uh, in G2 cutoff, we want to go over here to red and adjust our cutoff to the first hash mark, which is roughly, well, I go there. You know, that's where I put the cutoff for red. Uh, we'll go to green and we'll adjust our green to roughly the same location. And then we'll go to blue. Oh, hang on. I messed up my G1 voltage by accident. I turned the wrong knob. Okay, cutoff. Okay, blue. Uh, we want to roughly the same right there. Now, if we go to read emission, we're on, let's go to green. We'll switch this over to read emission, and our green is good. Roughly 1.2, that's about normal, or nominal. I like to see it closer to about 1.4, but that's okay. So I go over here to blue, blue is dead. <laughs> it's down there in the bad. Back to green is good, so we go over here to red. Red is also, uh, it's not dead, but it's not good either. So, yeah, blue is bad. So, when I was testing this earlier, if I leave it on here, if I just leave this here, watch, this is red. If I just leave this here, uh, earlier it was going down. It seems to be staying there, roughly. And it's climbing, actually. Look at that. But it looked so terrible because our Cruising USA board had uh, suicided that chip, which was killing our red. It was actually shorting the red to ground is what it was doing. So red's actually uh, getting better here. But if we go back to green, green is good, blue, no, blue is done for. So yeah, um, even, if, even if red was up here where green is, our blue is bad. Now, you might be thinking, why can't you just rejuvenate it, shoot it real quick, and reuse it? Well, I've already done that twice. I have rejuvenated this picture tube twice, and it goes right back to this same problem. So this thing is done. There's no saving it. Uh, so it's going to be destined for the recycler, and that's just all there is to it. So now I'm going to get that, that television tube and get it back together, get it into this frame, get this all tested, and show this real quick. So we can end up with a happy, uh, a happy ending where we didn't have to sacrifice anything to make one monitor work. All right, so I've got that television here that we tried to use the first time that we couldn't use the yoke for. I have this Korean chassis on here all hooked up, anode neck, yoke ground power, video remote, and I'm going to be using an X-Men PCB just to see how it looks. 
Uh, I have not powered it on yet. Um, let's get this on the tripod and see. Uh, that way, if it does work, I keep putting the tripod away thinking I'm not going to need it anymore. And next thing you know, I need it again. So, All right. Uh, let's turn it on and see. I have not turned this on in five years, I think, so I don't even know if it'll turn on. Let's see. Okay, it came on. There's not much high voltage, but it came on. Oh, look, it works. Uh, but we're upside down and we're way out of focus. Uh, not sure. Can I back this up so we're not... That uh, overhead light glare. Uh, sorry about that. But it does work. Look at that. Let's uh, adjust our focus real quick. Ah, good. Nice. Okay, so now let's turn this off. We gotta flip our vertical. So we need to flip our... We want to put this one on the outside. This one on the inside. Okay, that should get us right side up. It doesn't, I guess it doesn't uh, energize that all that well, but hey, that looks amazing. I'm sorry about the glare. I wonder if I can do anything about that. Not really. Sorry, let's turn the overhead light off and turn this light on. Maybe, maybe that'll help. Oh no, now it's too bright. <laughs> X-Men. <laughs> uh, but now I can't see... My adjustments, uh, vertical size, uh, vertical height, that's vertical hold, okay, uh, that's vertical position, ah, uh, there we go. Looks like this yoke might not be fully compatible with this chassis because it's folding over on the top. But, I mean, I can't swap the yoke for this chassis because it won't fit this tube as we see. But it's all the way up at the top. All the way up at the top. Uh, we're a little bit of a gap down here. Can I bring this down? Uh, vertical position. Uh, yep, I think that's good. And we need to... that looks pretty good. H position. There we go. Can I increase the width? Uh, I don't think there's a vertical or a uh, horizontal size pot on this. Uh, well, it shut off on me because of bad uh, power connection okay uh yeah there's no horizontal size pot so we'll have to rely on the width uh coil which doesn't seem to do anything hang on the bat my battery's about to die i gotta plug the camera in all right, camera's plugged in. Um, well, uh, let me... There has to be a way to adjust our horizontal size. I don't think that there's an actual H-size pot. God, a stupid connector. There is an H size pot. Huh. That's weird. It makes it, when you adjust the horizontal size, it makes it bloom. Can't say I've ever seen that before, but hey, that's better. Um, much better. Nice. Okay. That's fantastic. Now we just need that little bit more. And I wonder if this will do it here. 
I can't get the driver in there. And I can't. Hang on one second. Okay, so I brought the wit coil all the way out. Uh, this guy right there, it was all the way down. I brought it all the way out, and it didn't really make much difference. Now, X-Men also has a smaller resolution. Uh, I mean, this is somewhat livable, but if I were to, say, swap this out with the uh, MK3, for instance, Vertical hold. Which one of these was vertical hold? There it is. Vertical size. Each position. That's hold. That's hold. Vertical position, vertical size each size. Where in the heck is each position? Right, it's the third one, you nunkumpoop. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, this might not work for what we need. Um, Yeah, hmm. I may have to just see if I keep myself on the lookout for another uh, commercial television that I might be able to use because I don't have any more. But this one, I can't shift over anymore. I wonder if I could adjust the H hold. Yes, I can. So that's about the best we're going to get. There's about an inch of black on each side, an inch and three quarter, inch and three quarter. That's about the best we're going to get, which isn't bad. But I think I'm going to keep my eyes out, my eyes out for another two because let's look, let's measure, let's measure the yoke from this uh, other tube here. So as far as the horizontal goes on this one that we took off, it measures four ohms. This one that we're using two point five. So yeah, there's a discrepancy there and that's probably why it's not uh, not wide enough uh, hmm I wonder if I put a 4 ohm resistor across the if I tried to put a 4 ohm resistor across the horizontal winding that won't do anything that won't do anything because voltage takes the path of least resistance so it's still going to be 2.5 uh, I'd have to put it in series. I would have to take the red or the blue wire off the yoke and put a 2 ohm resistor in series with the wire, uh, and that would make it 4 ohms. Uh, so can I find a 2 ohm resistor just to see if, we, if that is a viable solution? Let me look for one. All right, we're, we're going to forget about that resistor crap because it, it's just not going to work. I, you know, people have asked me before, how come you can't just put a resistor across the winding and make it be with intolerance? Well, it's not just about resistance. It's about inductance as well. So I, I, thought, I thought better of it. I thought, you know, it's not going to work. I'm not even going to bother trying. Let's just replace the width cap because if you have a situation where the image is too wide, too narrow, you can't adjust it out, you can always just replace the horizontal width cap. If you go lower in rating, it increases the width. If you go higher in rating, then it decreases the width. 
In this case, we were too narrow, so I removed the original. Uh, this was a uh, 364J. Oh, focus on there, you rascal. Uh, 364J. Why won't you focus on? There we go. 364J, 400 volt. And it resided right there. So I replaced it with a 224, a 224J. After replacing that with a 224J, it is fantastic. Now, I did adjust colors and brightness and things like that. So this is after about 10 minutes of adjustments. But man, oh man, this is great. Now, I cannot shift the image anymore. This, it needs to go over this way just ever so slightly, but if I try and adjust it all the way to the left uh, with the horizontal hold, it starts to fold over on the top or get all wonky. So this is the best I can get it uh, given the situation. But uh, yeah, this is phenomenal. Man, so this is the original yoke that was being used. Oh! Pandora's box fell off. Speaker fell off. Zip ties fell off. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff up here that likes to fall off from time to time, and it gets loose every time I move around the top part of the test bench here, so <laughs> not editing that out. That happens. Anyway, so I changed the width cap out. Problem solved. So this is the original yoke uh, that I'm not going to be able to use, obviously, with this tube, but uh, this yoke, uh, you know, is within as far as I can tell. I got everything readjusted or put back where it goes. Disregard the clamp because the clamp moves, but we got our uh, purple lines lined up with the rings and the tape, uh, all of our marks and everything. So after putting those back in place, that's why it's important to do that. Got the yoke back in place. Only thing different is I did not have to reuse this uh, convergence strip that we took off. If you recall, when I originally took this off, we took that conversion strip off, but didn't need to go back on. So, yeah, um, changing, changing the width cap out, got this to be uh, perfect. And of course, after doing some adjustments and things, but man alive, it's gonna be great. So we need is a very last thing to do is pop this out, put it back in this frame, put this all back together with this tube, and we will be uh, good to go in all aspects. Nothing. Uh, the only casualty will be the original Paperboy tube. And we did not have to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul. Everything will go back the way it was. And now we have a working Paperboy monitor. And this monitor is back and working as well. So let's get this swapped into this frame. Uh, do a, one last final test and showcase. And we will call this entire project done. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be this long. Uh, but we had issues, of course, with this and the uh, Cruising USA board crapping out on me. Not sure how that happened, but and now I'll have a spare yoke for something in the future. But again, uh, needs it's an oddball needing a specific uh, diameter of hilt on the tube. But anyway, so let's get enough jibber jabber. Let's get this done and see how it works with uh, this in the other frame here. Okay, we are back in the original frame. Everything is resecured. We got the Orion tube here from the television, all decased, and it is still looking fantastic. It's more purple in color than through the camera, but in the camera it doesn't look quite right. But in person, man, oh man, this looks fantastic. This might be <laughs> one of the best looking pictures I've ever seen. That's crazy. So, yeah, uh, it does need to shift over just slightly, but if I try and use the H hold, it's the H position is all the way to the left that it possibly can go. I can adjust it a little bit to the left more with H hold, but if I do, it starts to get wonky at the top. So this is the best I can make it look, which is ter uh, totally fine, perfectly fine. So yes, fantastic. So we have brought this back to life, or we have not had to sacrifice this, I should say. Uh, we were able to make the picture tube, uh, or I'm sorry, the television tube work with this chassis that we stole. Uh, the tube from for the paperboy monitor so paperboy monitor is good to go again this monitor is good to go again and we were able to get all this done without having to sacrifice anything so all right um i believe that is it so again thank you very much for watching hopefully you learned something hopefully it's entertaining make sure you comment down below if uh, you have something to say um, i don't monetize any of my videos this is not a channel that I use to make money on. This is something I just use for recreation, or post for recreation, these videos, and also for uh, knowledge for everybody else in the future. If someone comes across an issue that they need to work on, hopefully I have a video on it. That's really 
the only reason I make these videos is for educational purposes and for uh, just getting the information out there for future reference for anybody that needs this information. So I don't make money. I have no Patreon. I have no whatever. So uh, I don't ask for donations. People have asked me, hey, can I send you some donations just as a, as a thank you? Well, I appreciate it, but it's not necessary. I have no way to accept donations and things like that. So um, I don't have any desire to set something up like that up. I don't really need the donations. Uh, but they are appreciated just for the offer. I should say just the offer is appreciated, but uh, I don't have anything like that set up maybe in the future. But for right now, this is not a monetary thing for me. This is an educational thing to put the information out there to uh, help people that need it. So that being said, again, thank you very much. Uh, make sure you comment down below, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more.